Hey, I'm Gareth from Gareth Takes Photos, and today I'm going to be taking you step by step through how I get a Milky Way shot. And to do it, we're here at a lovely location called Hadley Castle. I've been here a couple times before, but now we're going to be shooting the Milky Way core, and it's just appearing on the horizon. There's a little bit of light pollution to deal with, but we're going to try and make the most of what we have here today. So uh, let's get into it. So here on the back of my camera, you can see I've got the composition how I want it. So the Milky Way core is going to be coming up this side, there's a sensor, this side up and over the right side of the castle here. This is the easy bit of getting the composition. The next bit you need to know is the settings. So with my camera and the lens combination I've got here, I've got a 14 millimeter full frame equivalent, uh, which is a seven millimeter on my camera, which roughly will give you about a 30 second exposure maximum if you're using the Ruler 500. But I always dial it back a little bit to try and keep the stars and trailing as much. So I've got 25 seconds. I've got it wide open at f2.8 and I've put my ISO to 1600. Uh, usually I would like to boost the ISO a little bit more to get as much detail in the core as I can, but we're dealing with a lot of light pollution at this location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot about 10 to 15 shots in a row and we're going to stack them in post to get as much detail in the sky and the, the uh, foreground as we can. So let's get started. So away we go. So when you get to the location you're going to want to use an app to try and figure out where the Milky Way core is. Here I'm using photo pills. It's a little bit of an expensive app but it does have this cool night AR feature, which does work better in the day, I'll give you that. But you can just about see the horizon over there. You can see the Milky Way core is coming up and over the horizon. And this dark shadow to the left here, where the lights stop, that is the castle. So in theory, from this point here, we should be able to get the Milky Way core coming up the right side of this piece of the castle. And I think that's going to make for a pretty cool image. Now, if you are using the PhotoPills app and you have made the purchase, this has a really useful feature for working out the exact exposure time you need. So you're gonna go down to Spot Stars, into that menu, and you can put in the exact model of camera, the exact millimeter of your lens, the aperture. There's a few other settings here you can put in, but they're not that necessary. And that will give you the 500 rule and the MPF rule. Now the MPF rule will get you actual sharp pinpoint stars. So 25 seconds on my one, is about perfect. I could go up to 30 seconds, but you do run the risk of having the stars trailing a little bit, and I want them to be pinpoint sharp, so I'm gonna stick at 25. If the 10 pound for the PhotoBills app is a bit steep for you, then there's another way to work out how long your exposure length is gonna be, and that is taking 500 and dividing it by the focal length. Now, this isn't the exact focal length you're using. If you're using a crop sensor camera, you're going to have to times the crop factor by the focal length to get your full frame equivalent. Um, but that's just an extra bit of math. So if you're using a Canon APS-C, it's going to be your focal length times 1.6, and then divide 500 by that. Any of the other uh, APS-C camera brands are 1.5, so it's the same math, but with 1.5. If you use Micro Four Thirds, like I do, it's times 2, the focal length, and then divide 500 by that. It might be a little bit to get your head around when you first do it your first few times, but once you've been out in the field, you've done it a few times, it becomes second nature. You just kind of know how long the exposure is that you're going to need for what you're shooting. When it comes to knowing how much uh, ISO you should use, that is going to vary on where you are. Typically, I would use more than 1600, but like I said, due to the light pollution here, I can't use more than that because it's just going to blow out the image completely. So you're gonna to have to balance that depending on where you are and the situation. Now, when it comes to the gear you're gonna to need to shoot uh, Milky Way photos and general photos of stars, you're generally gonna want something with an aperture of f2.8 or wider. Uh, anything less, you can get the Milky Way, but it will you have to use the ISO more and it'll be a more muddy image, which you can fix with stacking, but it's better to have a cleaner image to start with than to have to deal with a more muddy picture and clean it up in post. So 
you're going to want something with f2.8. Uh, if you're using an Olympus like I am, the 7 to 14mm f2.8 Pro is an excellent lens for this. I've also got the Sigma 16mm f1.4, and that's a really good lens for this, especially if it's a dark situation. Here, it's a bit too light polluted for that lens, so that's why I'm using the 7 to 14. Plus, it gives me a nice wide shot. Um, so yeah, take these things into consideration. If you're using a Canon full frame, the 16 to 35 f2.8 is a good lens to use. Uh, the 24 f1.4 is also a very good lens to use. Uh, anything with those open apertures and a wide field of view is typically very good for the Milky Way. I mean, I, I've shot it at 35mm before. I quite like that focal length actually for Milky Way shots because it gives you more detail in the core. But again, not everyone has a nice 35mm prime with a nice wide aperture. So try and get the best lens you can for this because anything else is going to give you results that just aren't as good as what you're looking for. So like I said, f2.8 or more and a nice wide lens typically for this sort of shot. Getting focus on the stars for the shot can be a little bit challenging. If your camera is like mine and it has a live view boost mode, uh, turn this on. It will boost the gain in the, uh, in the live view image here and allow you to see your composition clearly and see the stars clearly. Also, if you're using one of the newer Olympus cameras, they have a thing called Starry Sky Autofocus. Uh, if you turn that on, it will just autofocus for you, which is a really useful feature. Now, a lot of cameras don't have this live view boost mode. Uh, my, my wife's Canon camera uh, does not have this feature at all. Uh, so with those cameras that don't have the feature, you will struggle a bit to find uh, focus. So what you have to do in that situation is you have to look for the brightest star in the sky. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be in the direction you're shooting. Just find the brightest one in the sky, aim at that, and use the zoom function on your live view preview to zoom in about 10 times, I think the maximum of most cameras is and that will bring you closer to the star and allow you to manually focus the lens from there. Some cameras do autofocus on the stars quite well. My old Sony, for example, did autofocus on the stars particularly well. But again, not every camera brand is the same, so this will depend on what you use. So, like I said, have a little play, manual focus, live view it, zoom in on the back screen, find the brightest star, manual focus on that. And you're going to want it to be as small of a little pinpoint as you can get it to be. Uh, anything bigger than that and when you actually take the picture it's all going to be out of focus. So try and get them as small as you can and that will be the best way for you to get focus. Now you don't have to just focus on the Milky Way core. Uh, you can actually get the trailing end of the Milky Way the opposite, opposite side to where you're shooting which is what I'm doing with this particular exposure composition here. I'm getting a this nice triangle piece of Hadley Castle with the tailing end of the Milky Way. So we're going to see how that comes out. Again, I'm going to shoot about 10 frames on this one and stack them in post. Now, if you have followed the steps in this video, you should have yourself some nice raw photos to process. Uh, take them into your processor of choice. I choose uh, Secretor to stack images and in Lightroom afterwards you don't have to stack them that's just a, a choice that I make and have a little play with them uh, if you'd like me to make a video on how I process the, the star photos then let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make that but have a little play and if you do use Lightroom use the dehaze slider on the sky you'll be pleased with the results well that about wraps up this video um hope you've enjoyed it hope you've learned something from this video that you might not have known before and i hope you will have clear skies so get out there get shooting have some fun and enjoy stars and astrophotography and get your milky way shots before the core disappears for the season i'm going to spend a little bit longer out here and have a little bit more of a play i reckon because it is nice to get out on an actual clear night so yeah i'm gonna go have some fun anyway i've been gaff and gaff takes photos and I will see you in the next video. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all the things. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought. See you later. Bye.